Hello and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go ahead and go over some of the new things that are in Gaia uh, in the new Bleeding Edge version. Not a whole lot uh, that I want to cover uh, with the older nodes. There's a few I want to cover that just came out with the uh, the new Bleeding Edge version. Just really quick, but the majority of the, this tutorial is going to be focused on easy distribution in Gaia so you can export maps and import them into other programs and use them for like distributing things like rocks plants so on and so forth so without further ado let's go ahead and get started and we're going to start with one of the new uh, primitives available and that is the multi fractal primitive you'll notice that this fractal has a lot of stuff going on. So if we were to compare this to something like <clears throat> uh, Perlin, which is still good in its own right, you can see we have our regular Perlin noise here, all basic settings here. Then we have our multifractal, and you're probably thinking, well, this isn't necessarily all that different looking like top down. and uh, it, there are some differences if you haven't noticed them already, but the majority of the differences are going to come in the settings here. So like with Perlin, we have FBM, we have Rigid, and we have Billowy. Those are all very basic noise patterns that come in a lot of 3D programs. Multifractal, however, however, mixes together multiple different fractals to get what we want. And by default, Auto Octaves is checked. And I recommend that keeping that checked unless you have a very specific work use or work case for it uh, or use case. Essentially, octaves is the detail in the noise. So if the size is how large the noise is, the octaves is how much detail is in the noise. We went over that in a different video before, but as you can see here, that is like no detail. Then we start getting more and more detail as we increase. Um, our octaves. And I recommend keeping auto octaves checked because it's going to Gaia is going to do its best to automate uh, the the amount of details you need. But if you want, you could always uncheck it, increase octaves all the way, and then you've got all of your octaves there. I'm going to keep it checked here though. Now the size again, all of this stuff here remains the same as everywhere else when it comes to size. Uh, so not, not a much to see there. Fractal gain is important here because this is going to show us the um, the difference between just Perlin and regular or regular Perlin and fractal. So as you can see here, we have our base shape being created by our seed and these other variations. But as we increase the fractal gain, you'll notice that we start getting more and more fractal noise in our landscape while retaining that overall shape except for when it's way too high. So this is where multifractal comes in handy because it'll warp your base shape and it'll also add additional details on top of that where with this uh, Perlin noise we don't have those options. We kind of just get the base shape and the noise on top of it all in one. So we have a little bit more uh, work our use cases for this because now we can go down here and we can change our seed around uh, to get a different shape overall shape of our landscape we can change some of the offset that, not, not that much um, offset I'm still kind of figuring out exactly how to use it um, for now we're gonna keep that there <laughs> uh, offset just offsets everything I suppose but I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Uh, so we can play with our variation which as you can see down here we have these really cool little hoodoos or whatever going on little variations in our noise and if we were to increase it we start making more variety here and there. It starts changing our overall base shape so this is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna keep this at default Then we have our smoothness and that's going to, I assume, smooth out additional variations, I guess. Uh, so if we were to increase the smoothing, there we go. We're going to have some variation, but if we increase the smoothing, you can see how that's smoothing out those variations. If we were to decrease the smoothing, then we get none. 
So play with that as you will, uh, but you need to have a little bit of variation either direction, I suppose, for smoothing to work. Uh, and you can see here, smoothing is just kind of smoothing it all out, making it flat. And this can come in handy if you need some areas to be selective with noise, so you can have a couple multi multi-fractals. Just copy this node and then uh, keep your base shape with this node. So let's get rid of this per one. Copy this multi-fractal and then in one have everything set up how you want and the other one start playing with the variation and the smoothness and uh, you'll get some interesting looks I imagine. Then we have bias. Uh, bias is going to work just like bias in um, any other image application. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit easier to see what's going on if we have some variation but you can see here if we start changing our bias we start changing the overall high and low values of our terrain. Same thing with contrast, it's just another basic image processing tool that's in pretty much every image processing application. So uh, play with that as you might. And keep those at default as well. And uh, now we're going to look at the variations here. So we have a uh, secondary fractal, which will be what's controlling, I believe, if I, if I know, if I, if I assume this correctly, is going to be controlling maybe our overall shape, but I could be wrong. Uh, if you hover over these, some of them give really nice tooltips, but it doesn't look like multifractal is going to give us a tooltip. So uh, I could be wrong on that, but from what it looks like is we have our noise that's on top of our base here, and then this variation is the variation in our base. But uh, we have two options, secondary fractal and self-modulation. And if we select self-modulation, we lose the bias option, but left with everything else. So we can kind of just modulate this how we please until we get what we want. So uh, you're still left with very similar controls. You got your smoothing and you have your contrast, which will help you increase or decrease those high and low values again. And then you have your offset, which it's offsetting the entire landscape at that point. So, all right. Anyways, I'm going to keep it on uh, the, the secondary fractal here. And we're just going to um, go ahead and set all these defaults, I suppose till we get what we need. There we go. All right. Uh, what I like to do with this multi-fractal, now that we've kind of broken it down a bit, this is a very cool addition to Gaia. Uh, I recommend playing with it. I can see it's gonna turn into one of my most favorite and well-used nodes. I like to combine it with slope noise. I've been playing with it all day, and I found that combining it with slope, slope noise gives us really cool rocky outcroppy features. Um, so it looks like it's like the side of a mountain face, or you're down here looking up mountains. It looks really big and large and in charge. So we're going to use it with the slope noise. Uh, but I also, uh, what I haven't done is I've, I haven't tried playing with stratified. So let's see what it looks like with stratified. Actually, doesn't look half bad. We have these cool cliff faces down here. About right in this area right here. Um, and this overall uh, stratified shape, I, I think I like this quite a bit. Now, um, what we're going to do next is we're going to throw in one more node that, and I want to talk about all these nodes eventually with you guys, but I'm going to talk about one more node and it's the warp node. And this is kind of like the new younger brother to the displace node, which I used all the time. I mean, I think I use it in pretty much every tutorial. Um, and what the warp noise node does is, again, it kind of just displaces the uh, landscape that you are you make that you're creating. However, instead of just displacing it in any which direction, up or down, or uh, whether it's just a simple displacement or a rugged displacement, this actually adds warping to your landscape. So you can see right here, in this area right here, we've got some warping going on, as well as up here and back here. And what this does is it makes it look really, uh, at least with these current 
default settings, it makes it look like it's uh, lava rock, and it's really, really cool. Um, and then, uh, again, some very basic, simple settings here that uh, are common in most nodes. So we're going to skip over those, size, strength, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we have Z scale. Z scale, and I'm not entirely sure exactly how to describe it, but what it's doing, from what I can tell, is that it might be warping more on that axis, but I'm not I'm not too sure on that one actually. I gotta look at some documentation for it if it exists. Uh, it makes it, it looks like it might be making these little peaks, but but I'm not entirely sure. It's kind of like squashing it all down and making peaks. So we're just going to kind of add a little bit there just to give it some randomness. And then we also have our noise variations. So we have Perlin, FBM, and then all the Voronoi options that we have. Uh, and if we were to look at our Voronoi node real quick. Um, is it this one? Yeah. So we have all of our Voronoi options here. We don't have the function, but we have the form. So we have all the forms of Voronoi in here, at least some of them. I didn't quite look to see if it was all of them, but we have some of them in there. And what that's going to do is it's going to change the the noise patterns of the warping to be either Perlin or Voronoi, depending on whichever you choose. And those are going to give you different looks, so I just recommend playing with them. I don't want to explain them all to you because a lot of this stuff is visual. Uh, so you just have to understand that Voronoi is like cellular based uh, and line based patterns and then Perlin's more of your natural landscape patterns. Then we got the complexity which is kind of self-explanatory if we were to decrease the complexity we don't get as much complexity in our warping um, and our noise type. So I'm just going to leave that at default and then we have our roughness and again uh, if we decrease the roughness this is probably all to do with our noise type. We have less rough noise and if we increase it, we increase some roughness in our noise, in our warping noise. We can normalize it, which is pretty cool, so we can get all the values out. Um, that's actually quite nice. It's built into the nodes, so you don't have to worry about another node. And then we have our edge behavior. We have mirror or edge, and I imagine this is just going to be dependent on your, your needs, but if you look at the edges over here, if we do mirror, it's going to mirror whatever it is that's over here, I suppose. Um, and then if we just do regular edge, it's just going to make an edge uh, like it gets cut off. So it's pretty nice. Pretty simple. Then we have our seed, of course. And seed is just everything else that seed is. And it uh, uh, just randomizes your overall uh, values. So uh, what the next thing we have is iterations, and again, iterations just how many times it gets these settings get applied over and over again, how many times they iterate. So obviously that's too high, and uh, that's probably too high. And I imagine you want to really control this really well if you're going to use any iterations. But for now, I'm just going to use none. We have our mode. We have vector field, bitmap, and vector field integral. It defaults to vector field. I couldn't tell you what these modes do right now. I have to read or ask and see if I can get some description on them. But I'm just going to leave the vector field there by default. Uh, I'm also going to change the seed of our multifractal real quick. There we go. There was just a few things after we applied the warping that I didn't quite like. All right, so um, one more new node in the latest uh, Bleeding Edge version. There's a lot of stuff that's changed in the toolbox. And what I really like is the surface right here. So what surface does is it adds tiny, minor, micro amounts of small noise and detail to your landscape to make it look more realistic. So if we were to add that, it's really hard to tell, but if you look like right in these areas, you'll see it just adds a tiny bit of sharpness. But we have some really cool options here. And again, a lot of them are self-explanatory, so we don't have to dive too much into those. But if we were to move really close up to our surface, maybe down here, we can see the before and after. Let's change this to rocky. 
sometimes they have to click off and click on a few times for it to go through. So we have this flat looking area right here. Put Rocky on, now we're introducing more detail. Let's go ahead and increase the resolution to 1K real quick. And if we go back to regular warp and then surface, you can see we're adding all these small amounts of noise and detail. It makes it look a lot more hard, less, less soft, more hard. Um, and then with Rocky, we only have a strength option, and that's because all we need to do is increase the strength to increase the amount of detail we're adding to our landscape overall. It needs to have something to play with though, so these flat areas where there's no information to play with, it's not going to add anything. So we're just going to get nothing there. Uh, the roughness option is one that I like playing with the most when it comes to making a hard surface. Um, and I also like stacking it. So uh, I notice that I get really great results when I stack it. So if we keep the strength at 60 but we turn the coverage up, you can really kind of see a change in the 2D version, the 2D uh, field right there. When we increase the coverage, you notice that overall some of the detail gets lost at higher values. If you were to decrease it, more detail comes in, but then it starts looking a little bit more pocky. So uh, I like keeping the coverage a little bit higher. I think the default value of 33 is actually pretty decent. And then we just have the density, which just increases how much of this roughness is covering our surface. Um, so I'm not going to use that much on the density and I'm going to increase the strength just a tad bit more and I think I will decrease the coverage just a bit more. There we go. Okay. Maybe the density bit. Uh, maybe a lot. Wow. These values are super strict. Okay. So anyways, without further ado, let's, let's, let's move on. Um, so anyways, those are Except for the slope noise, these three, the multifractal warp and the surface, are probably my most favorite so far. Surface I like using quite a bit, especially stacking it after eroding and whatnot and being selective with it. And uh, speaking of erosion, let's go ahead and just, we're going to do a simple erosion for this video because I don't want to spend too much time talking about how to build out a landscape because I already have videos that do that. Uh, plus I plan on making more in the future. I want to kind of just get to the distribution options, uh, which is an older node that's been around for a while and I've been wanting to make a video on it. I just haven't been able to get around to it till now. So uh, now that we have it eroded, you can kind of see how that surface option node, whatever, surface node uh, is kind of affecting our landscape. So with surface, and then we erode it, adds a little bit more detail here and there. Makes things look a little bit more sharp and crisp and really nice. Okay. So we just have these really cool like rock siding here. Um, I'm going to change the erosion a bit so we select the processing area to be the precipitation amount. The reason why is because we're going to get these softer areas like these taluses and whatnot that are going to add a little bit more opportunity for us to use the deposits to uh, use them as a mask for our distribution. All right, so. <clears throat> Um, let's go ahead and add in our data here. So the data will be distribution. And all this does, it's very underwhelming if you're wanting to use it for something else. You can use it for a whole bunch of things, um, like a mask for adding in like specs to like a rock surface or something, if you're texturing inside of Gaia. However, in this case, all we're doing is we're adding it to our erosion. And actually, I did that wrong. We want to add it to our deposits. So we want to use the mask from our erosion in our deposits to the distribution that, whoops, I keep doing that. <clears throat> that way, we only get the distribution in mostly our deposit areas from our erosion. So you can think of these little white dots as a tiny little instance inside of your 3D application. So right here, that could be a rock, that could be a rock, that could be a plant, just really depends. Uh, it's all gonna be, um, if you use this specific uh, distribution map, everything here will be a rock 
but you can make multiple distributions for different things. So you can maybe rename this to rock distro. And then you can make another one. Attach that to something like maybe the flow. And th this is just very simple. You can use more selective options like uh, the select uh, the the slope selection uh, or even the height selector, whichever. And then you can name this one uh, plant distro. And that way you know that this is you're going to be your rock map. This will be your plant map. And you can use all of this to kind of dis distribute plants in your environment. So um, we can make it look more realistic if we were to be more selective with it. But let's just use these two just for display purposes. Uh, so anyways, the distro data node uh, has an occurrence, density, and a seed. So the occurrence is how often these occur. So if we increase this, they will occur all over the place more often. And if we were to decrease it, they would occur less, I suppose. Then don't mistake that for density because you can have a uh, very high density and that might take a minute to build, which will increase the density in all these major areas. So the occurrence will be, hey, we're going to appear here, but we're also going to appear out here in the nether area. So if we were to be more cautious with it, we can reduce it down to 20%, and that way they mostly appear in our deposit mask rather than everywhere else. And then if you need more, you can increase the, the density quite a bit. Uh, in this case, it's always nice to have um, a little bit of plant here and there, or rock here and there without too much um, pocketing going on. And then um, in this one, uh, we'll just keep the regular defaults because we don't want to spend too much time on it. So, uh, because all of this is just for visualizing things, we might tone down the occurrence, I guess. Let's see. That might be good. So I want the majority of the plants to be in the flow lines just so I can show you what it looks like. All right, we're not gonna worry about texturing the landscape either. Uh, we're just gonna mark this for export, mark this for export, mark this for export. There we go. And it's really nice that you can build out these really cool detailed landscapes and spend like no time doing it. It's it's really awesome. I just really, really love Gaia. It's turning out to be really good and I haven't been so excited for a 3D landscape application in a very long time, so that's saying something. Okay, so uh, at least since Geoglyph. Geoglyph sparked an entirely new revigoration inside of me for World Machine, and uh, I liked World Machine, it was awesome, I love it still, but man, it I needed something different, and this is exactly what I needed. All right, so um, I recently got uh, Octane 2020.1, so I'm really hoping that it'll work with uh, Cinema 4D R20. It should, because I mean, it's been developed for R20 already, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build this out, and then I will be right back with um, Cinema 4D to set this up. Okay, so let's go ahead and quickly set up our scene the way we normally do. So we're going to use 1,000 here and the width and height segments. We're going to throw in a displacer. We're going to drop the displacer under the plane as a child. Uh, and then we're going to go to shading. We're going to turn off the tiling options under mapping so we don't get those annoying edges. And uh, we're just going to go and find our stuff here. Sometimes I don't know what it is, but I have to go in because I, I have my outputs here. I wonder if I can just drag and drop, I guess. I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, all right, cool. Sometimes I, I don't know what it is, but it won't, Cinema 4D won't show the build items inside of a folder. And I know it's a Cinema 4D problem because they're obviously here, so it's not a Gaia problem, but it's super annoying. Uh, all right, 
So let's put that down for the time being and let's increase our object size here. So we're gonna to go to 1.5. Reason being is because it's a very small four meter by four meter landscape and uh, that is not very big. So we don't need a whole lot of displacement going on there. All right, so that, that looks about right, okay. So we're gonna right click our plane, go to current state to object, and that will make our plane a 3D object, which we can see here. So that'll make it so we can distribute stuff across it. So what we're gonna use for distribution though is going to be octane scatter. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna change the distribution to surface, then we're gonna drop our plane down under surface, and then we're gonna reduce the normal align down to like point uh, zero one zero two or something the reason why I don't want to go all the way down is because I want there to be some variation in their alignment so that they um, aren't poking straight up and down all the time they're kind of off a little bit off to the side but not much all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a shader so we got to use the drop down menu and this is for octane but this should be the same for any other distribution program that you're using or any other app that you're using its masks work the exact same way as anything else but in octane all we want to do is use an image texture let's go inside the image texture and let's load up our um, it's not going to be there because it's bugging out uh, we want to load up first our rock distro I think would be a good one to start with and what we're going to throw in is, uh, we're just going to use, uh, let's see here, we're going to use a Forester, and the reason why I'm using R20 is because I miss Forester and I don't have the updated version for it yet um, for R21, so uh, we're just going to have to stick with that. <clears throat> okay, the rock parameters, we're going to randomize our rock we're going to apply a material as well and we're just going to find one that looks pretty decent i know it looks ugly right now but that's that'll change okay i think that'll do and we're just gonna copy this rock a few times and we're just gonna randomize it apply a different material too we're just gonna use a different mixture of materials on them and Call it good. No, oh, that one we already have two of. All right, and then we're gonna drop them all under octane scatter um, as children. There we go. And uh, let's let's move them out of the way too. So let's move them over here. We gotta change the size of them or else they're gonna be ridiculous looking. So. To do that, we're going to go into the rock properties and we're going to reduce the rock size. So actually, let's zoom out here a little bit. Let's bring these back in a little bit. So we got a rock four. We just want to reduce the rock size to whatever it is that we need. So something super small. So if we go to point zero one. That's how big our rock is, which is probably too big. So we're going to go to point zero zero one. Maybe not that small, zero zero five. Yeah, that'll do. All right, then we're just going to copy that and we're just going to apply it to all the other rocks. We want to change the base size because if we want to get really creative, which I might spend some time doing. Um, maybe not, <laughs> uh, it really depends on how I feel. Uh, then we want to make sure that we have um, some different sizes and variation going on, but we're not gonna worry about it. All right, so we have our image texture loaded with our distribution that we made. And what we need to do for it to work now is we need to increase the minimum here by at least 0.01 before it'll work and depending on our values here we might need to 
Yeah, there we go. Now we can see they've changed from that green color to this black line. As you can see there, these little black lines. And uh, now they're just all over where our distribution was. So they're here in the deposits where I want them to be. Because uh, that's where the rock's going to go as it breaks down over time and into the erosion and whatnot. And they're also... Uh, we could also make another distrib uh, distribution or octane scatter to get them in this flat area over here. Uh, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. All right. So we got our material on our rocks and we got them dis distributed across everything using masks, being selective with it a bit. So let's... Uh, this is actually looking really cool. I should have just stuck more time into making a texture for it. Anyways, let's go ahead and add a sun so we can see what we're doing. And uh, let's rotate it around. So we get some interesting shadows. Maybe something like that. And then let's render it out. Yeah, alright. So the rocks might still be a bit too big, and they're being scattered everywhere. This is where you want to be more selective in everything. So you want to scatter them, maybe not at high uh, areas like this, uh, but lower areas, yeah, that, that looks totally fine. So that's where they're being scattered to, as you can see right there. So they're all being deposited exactly where we said they would be inside of Gaia. Uh, so if we were to go back and look at our rock distro, they're piling up right here, around here, and up there. And in Cinema 4D, they're piling all over the place where we told them to. Super nice. So that makes uh, distributing things a little bit easier in, in uh, your 3D application outside of Gaia. But at least Gaia gives you the tool, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and make one more Octane Scatter. And we're just going to throw in a plant. So we're just going to do a multi-flora, I suppose. And uh, let's do... Where's the library? Right there. Okay. Let's just throw in... I like this hairy brome. So we're just going to copy that a few times. Uh, we actually have to check an option here to randomize the seed a bit so let's select that keep clicking on that to randomize the seed you just keep clicking it that's all you do we don't want to change the materials or anything we just want to change the overall model so all right let's go ahead and load that under and we're just nope not that there we go okay I'm just going to do the same thing here. We're just going to take our plane, drop it in there, change the surface, and we're going to drop in... Holy crazy. Okay, first of all, we need to change the size. <laughs> okay. And to do that, since it's being really slow, bugging out on me, I'm going to pause it. I have new graphics cards coming in, uh, 2080 or 2070 Supers. I'm super excited because I love my Titan Zs, but they are aged. They're beastly rendering machines, but playing games on them is kind of rough sometimes, and uh, they're starting to get there with Octane as well. So I'm getting pretty excited about that. I'm going to change the multi-flora size. Uh, let's hide these for the time being and drag that out so we can see what's going on all right did I yeah okay so we gotta keep changing the, uh, the sizing here bring it out over here there we go all right now we'll be able to uh, tell the size a little bit easier maybe right there we'll do so we'll just use that same size across all of them same thing we did with the rock 
So yeah, 2070 Supers. Uh, the reason why I got those instead of something higher, like a 2080 Ti, is because I can get two of them for the same price as one 2080 Ti. And uh, I can also get better performance out of them uh, using the NVLink option as well. Uh, granted, the 2080 Ti has more VRAM up front, but I'm I don't know how NVLink works with Octane just yet, but it's all right because I, right now I only have six gigs of VRAM, and I'll be up in that to eight, as well as getting better performance. So it, overall, it's a good investment. I didn't spend a whole lot of money. I'm quite happy. So um, I've been saving up forever for those as well. So I mean, there's there's that. All right, so we're gonna take this plant distro. Just gonna drop it right into. Actually, you know what? Just to make sure that it will work properly, I'm going to throw in the image texture here. And then we're going to drop it in. Dang it. There we go. Alright. Nope. And we'll call that good. And again, we're just going to increase this to 0.1. And let's increase the amount we have here. So how many rocks did we throw in there? We threw in 200,000. We'll do that with the plants too. Um, and then uh, we're just going to change the normal align down a little bit. Maybe there. That'll probably do it. And then let's see what we've got going on. It's getting a little bit slow. It's getting a little frustrating. All right, cool. As you can see here, if we were to zoom out, where we have the rocks being distributed on our uh, deposits, we now have the plants being distributed among our flow lines. Like that. So that is really nice and simple. Of course, this isn't natural, and you'll have you'll want to do other things to distribute things along and make things look nice. And I probably wouldn't use the erosion maps that are created uh, necessarily, but um, you can you get the point now. So, anyways. That is the distribution node inside of Gaia. Very powerful, very fun to use. Uh, you can use it for all sorts of things. This is how I use it typically uh, when, I'm, when I actually do use it. Um, I tend to overlook a lot of the nodes that I really like because I'm too much, focusing too much on using new ones because I want to learn everything. So, uh, But this one is definitely one that I have not overlooked uh, very often because as you can see here, how powerful it can be driving your selection, so you can be more selective of your stuff. So anyways, uh, I hope this was informative for you, and I hope you like it, and uh, I would like to see you uh, chime in on the live stream that will happen either tomorrow or Sunday. I tend to do it around uh, maybe 4, 5, or 6 p.m. MST, but I will start a live stream. Uh, we're going to go over some of the more new features in Gaia and the latest Bleeding Edge version. And we're actually going to try to hit off a couple requests that I got. So I will see you guys uh, possibly tomorrow or Sunday. Most likely tomorrow, though. All right. Bye.